Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. Open dialogue between educators charts a new course for education in St. Lucia. The Department of Health and Wellness is taking a proactive approach in protecting the public from dengue fever. Algas Organics sets its sights on penetrating the U.S. market. All that plus the latest in youth development sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Education managers air differences of opinion in an effort to strategize on innovative ways to move the sector into a new era. The 35th National Principals Association Conference served to facilitate engagement between policymakers, technocrats, and implementers. More in this report from Alicia Ali. The National Principals Association is known for its passionate advocacy for the advancement of the education sector. The organization's 35th conference focused on the 21st century principle towards a solution-oriented approach. The organization was not shy in airing their grievances to the education minister who was present. NPA President Pauline Antoine Prosper acknowledged that leadership is sometimes tough and often quite lonely. She is of the view that principles, more often than not, are being sidelined from important developments in the sector. I am also worried about the lack of support for principals at the school level to ensure that there is effective implementation of the initiatives. If we speak to standards for instruction, I believe that we should be articulating a revision of the school curriculum national assessment, and teacher education as key components to the reform process, process. They cannot be done in isolation. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations, and Sustainable Development, the Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert, reminded the NPA of her ministry's efforts outside of what she describes as, quote, the letter-provoked meetings, unquote. The minister meets with the NPA once a quarter throughout the academic year and has extended that courtesy to the district education officers and the St. Lucia Teachers Union. Further, the minister is adamant that decisions are taken after discussions with affected stakeholders. I want to place on record I, my prefix to this was the evolving conversation. I have come to appreciate in this business that I must define consultation, I must define engagement, and I must always place my conversations with you in historical context to mark the genesis of the conversation and to relate it to the outcome. Minister Rigobert appealed to the NPA to be fair in their assessment of anyone, regardless of party or personality, who occupies the chair of education minister. Lecturer at the University of the West Indies Mona campus, Dr. Kanut Thomas was the guest speaker for the event. He said the onus is on the principals to propel themselves into this millennia by acquiring the requisite skills and qualifications in addition to work experience to be better school managers. Schooling tends to be uh, still based on the old paradigms of a head teacher who manages and instructs and directs and controls rather than a person who sees himself or herself as a leader of experts, a facilitator of other leaders, and who invests himself or herself in helping those other leaders to flourish and to bring to bear on the agenda of the school their expertise. The conference was held from the 28th of February to the 1st of March at the Coconut Bay Resort and Spa in View Fort. From the Communications Unit in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Alicia Ali reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness is taking a proactive approach in protecting the public from dengue fever amidst concerning reports from neighboring islands. Following advisories from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, and more recently, the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, 
The Department of Health and Wellness is advising the public to take all precautionary measures to safeguard against the spread of dengue fever. Dengue is a flu-like illness that affects infants, young children, and adults. The symptoms typically begin 4 to 10 days after infection and include a high fever, headache, vomiting, muscle and joint pains, and a characteristic skin rash. It is spread by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, an insect with black and white legs, which mostly bites in the day and likes to breed in and around homes. The chief medical officer, Dr. Meline Frederick James, says that while the dengue fever alert is normally raised closer to or during the rainy season, recent developments within the region have prompted the alert at this time. Certain countries in the region, Jamaica, the French territories, have been experiencing an increased number of cases of dengue fever outside of the typical um, cyclical pattern where we normally see an increase in dengue fever around the rainy season. So those countries are actually seeing an increase right now. And persons are well aware that due to um, travel and the interregional movement, it is quite possible that when one country is having an issue, others um, can develop it as well. So persons are being placed on guard. There are various types of dengue fever, and that means that persons can get the illness more than once. Senusha last had a dengue epidemic in 2013, with type 4 of the illness being the most predominant. There were also dengue epidemics in 2010 and 2011, where types 1, 2, and 4 were experienced. But the type being reported in most recent times is type 3, one that the chief medical officer says has not been seen in St. Lucia since 2009. This, she says, is of concern to the public. It's been about 10 years since we last had an epidemic of dengue type 3. And right now, the results um, coming, especially from the French territories, indicate that dengue types 1 and type 3 are circulating. What does this mean for St. Lucia? It means that we have quite a, a large population, anybody who's less than um, about 10 years or younger, who probably has never been exposed to type 3 before. And it is definitely a concern when persons who have not been exposed um, get, when a disease enters a, a, a country where persons haven't previously been exposed. Because usually it means those persons haven't developed antibodies, and it's quite possible that you may have a larger outbreak as a result of that because you have more persons who are susceptible to the condition. The chief medical officer is asking the public to be on guard and to address all breeding sites that would encourage the breeding of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Department of Infrastructure is seeking to improve the traffic flow and reduce congestion along the castries Rosalie Highway for the more than 27,000 average daily commuters. According to engineer in the Department of Infrastructure, Nahum Sylvester, various traffic control interventions are being implemented at key parts of the highway. We have over the years observed and noticed that the increased travel time between Grosley and Castries, especially during the rush hour on mornings and afternoons, that it is becoming um, a nuisance, it is increasing, it is leading to accidents and it is also leading to increase, decreasing on our level of road safety. Also by virtue of economic activity, the travel time between those two communities definitely is hampering the level of economic activity that one would love to have. And we would also love that the school children are able to use the road safely and in adequate time. So historically what we have had, we have been observing over the past few years, the time that it takes for persons to travel from the community of Groselet or the town of Groselet into um, Castries City. A three-month pilot is currently in motion, focusing on minimizing traffic interruptions by closing the entry into the Windward Islands Gases Road, preventing vehicles from using the junction as a bypass. Officer in charge of the Traffic Department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, Inspector Benson de Turville, explains the rationale. We are also ensuring as well that the motoring public from the Bois area 
if you using the, the current back road, that second road as well, that they maintain the the route which is supposed to be the Groselet Highway, and a number of mono, motor omnibus drivers as well as private individuals are guilty of trying to reduce on that time by taking these shortcuts and all of this contributes towards uh, an increase in the, the travel time from Groselet to, to Castries. So by putting these measures in place, by restricting access through the back roads into Winwood Island gases and onto the highway, we are hoping that the travel time is reduced by as much as 15 to 20 minutes on any given day. The pilot phase focuses on weekday morning peak hours of 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Algas Organics has set its sights on penetrating the U.S. market following successes locally and regionally. Export St. Lucia has been assisting the trailblazing company. We have more in this report. Algas Organics is a St. Lucian-based biofertilizer company which has been generating tremendous buzz since the company's CEO and young entrepreneur Johanna Dujon took the problem of the invasive sargassum seaweed and turned it into an organic fertilizer. Dujon and his budding company has seen much success in setting up shop in 2016. However, the young entrepreneur is determined on expanding his horizons and taking his product to new markets. In keeping with this mindset, Dojo has been attending several trade shows and facilitation workshops, the most recent being the Southern Farm Show in the United States, facilitated by Export St. Lucia. As part of our expansion plans, we're targeting the U.S. market. And that is a broad market comprising of 52 states. And so we had already proceeded to get some trials done um, in the U.S. market, which came back successful. Uh, and consequently, we were looking at identifying uh, potential trade shows within uh, that market where we had conducted the trials. And so uh, the objective really and truly of attending this trade show was to build relationships, uh, you know, and potential collaborations, of course, to, for getting our gas organics into the U.S. market. According to Dujon, the overall objective was a major success as Algas was able to meet with a number of potential partners who are keen on taking Algas's U.S. exploits to the next level. An accomplishment that Dujo believes would not have been possible without the intervention of Export St. Lucia. Export St. Lucia has been a major, major, major help um, in terms of, you know, we have never approached Export St. Lucia and said, hey, we have this trade show, this thing that may, you know, potentially boost business 10x or whatever it is, for them to, to tell us, you know, well, whatever it is, they always go out of their way, um, you know, Mr. Badal and the team, to really assist um, in fostering the development of an industry, and we are very grateful for that. So it has made the world of a difference. Um, it has given us the opportunity to attend and be part of events that drive growth in the company that ordinarily may have been out of our reach, and so that is really a game changer. Dujo says there are many plans afoot for Algas Organics that would translate to tremendous benefits for communities along the East Coast. For Export St. Lucia, Jason Darius reporting. St. Lucia will join the rest of the world on Friday, 8th March 2019 in celebration of International Women's Day to the theme Think Equal, Build Smart, Innovate for Change. Drawing from the momentum of the 40th anniversary of independence, International Women's Day will build on the inclusive and reflective theme for St. Lucia's independence anniversary, All In, Our Journey, Our Future. St. Lucia will also join the rest of the world in undertaking a comprehensive national review of the implementation of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action to inform a 2020 Beijing Plus 25 report to be considered at the 64th session of the Commission on the Status of Women. To celebrate the day, the Division of Gender Relations will host a church service to be held on Friday, the 8th of March, 2019 at 10 a.m. All St. Lucians are called upon to show their support by attending the service which will be held at the Minor Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. And this is the NTN Nightly coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. No one ever reads the fine print. But if you use a cell phone, landline, the internet or cable TV, read the terms of the service contract carefully and pay attention to the type of service, the length of the contract, 
contract renewal, penalties, fees for services, termination and reconnection, fee increases and how much notice is required, the option not to receive advertisements and sharing personal information with third parties. Do not sign a contract that you are not satisfied or comfortable with. This message is brought to you as a public service announcement by Ectel, the NTRC and this station. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien of your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Another exciting round played yesterday in the Mass United Insurance Schools Cricket Tournament. Ada Cruz in a playing field and beaten to Arthur Lewis Community College made light work of Castries Comprehensive Secondary School, winning that game comfortably by seven wickets. Castries Comprehensive batting first, dismissed for 89 in 19.3 overs, with Embert Lord 13, the only batsman to reach double figures. The main wicket takers for Sir Arthur Lewis Community College were seam bowler Naim Roseman with 5 for 26 and Simeon Gerson 3 for 10. Chasing 93 for victory, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College led by Matteo Boulogne with 28 and Dominic Ogi 16 easily got to their target, finishing on 92 for 3 in 10.3 overs. Castries Comprehensive's most successful bowler was Imbert Lord with 2 for 14. At the Balata playing field, St. Mary's College defeated Corrin Secondary by 3 wickets in an exciting matchup. Corrin Secondary taking first knock in a game reduced to 40 overs aside, made 196 for 7 in their allotted overs, with team captain, Winner Island's under 17 player Lee Solomon, top scoring of a well played knock of 83, which included 11 fours and 2 sixes. This was Solomon's third half century of the tournament. Other useful scores for current secondary came from Daniel Edwin with 47 not out and Makil Nelson with 21. Sergio Ogis was St. Mary's most successful bowler with 2 for 34. Chasing a challenging total of 197 for victory, St. Mary's College, led by Wessini's under 15 player and team captain Akim Ogis, reached their target finishing on 201 for 7 in 33.2 overs. Ogies finished on 67 not out, which included 6 fours and 4 sixes. Other valuable contributions came from Desni Gidhari with a well played 51, 6 fours and 4 sixes, Jihan Buddha 36, and Sergio Ogies 10. Kenrick James of Current Secondary recorded the first hat trick of the tournament. He finished with figures of 3 for 40. At the PI playing field, Group A leaders Sufre Comprehensive Secondary defeated Chuzel Secondary in another exciting match by two wickets. Trizel secondary batting first in a game reduced to 45 overs a side, dismissed for 123 in 24.5 overs, with Davel Edward making 25 and Jim Peter 17. Polling for Sufre Comprehensive, Richie William took 3 for 21 and Kevin Gassi 3 for 22. Set a target of 124 for victory, Sufre Comprehensive held their nerds finishing on 124 for 8 with Kevin Gassi contributing 21 and Richie William 20. Davel Edward was Chosel Secondary's most impressive bowler, scalping 5 for 27. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is hosting a two-day capacity building and institutional strengthening workshop at the Blue Coral Mall Conference Room, March 6 to 7, 2019. After the opening of the workshop, Henry Charles, Youth Development Specialist, spoke on theories, perspectives, and approaches to youth development. But young people, as anybody else, have different attitudes, different perspectives. That can be shaped by where you come from, your family, your religious background, maybe your level of education. Um, you know, if, if you, some people may read more than others, and they may be exposed to, to more, um, you know, more ideas and things. Uh, but, so that, that is an important, Important, important distinction for us to make. Here's a reminder that April is again being observed as Youth Month. Some of the activities planned include April 1st to the 4th Speech Festival at the Administrative Financial Center, registration deadline March 20th. Youth Expose will be held on April 5th at Constitution Park, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. April 19th to the 21st, Camp Kalinago for National Youth Council affiliates and clubs at Fongelib. And one of the huge attractions, Youth Awards. Nominations are open. 
only completed nomination forms received by the March 29, 2019 deadline will be considered. And that's your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Consumer Affairs Department joins the rest of the world in the month of March in recognition of World Consumer Rights Day and is encouraging the private sector to show appreciation for consumers. Here's Jacques Hingson Compton. On March 15, consumer organizations in more than 100 countries across the globe will celebrate World Consumer Rights Day under the theme Trusted Smart Products. The theme intends to highlight what consumers want and need from a connected world and put them at the heart of the development of these digital products and services. Marvin St. Louis, Information Assistant at the Consumer Affairs Department, says consumer groups in St. Lucia will continue to raise the global awareness of consumer protection. Whilst technology continues to advance and more smart products emerge, consumers are now getting access to new services, more responsive products, and greater convenience and choice. But on the other hand, consumers are also faced with concerns such as lack of security, privacy issues, and clarity as to who is responsible when those technologies fail us. Therefore, the Consumer Affairs Department is advocating those concerns on behalf of consumers in St. Lucia and joining other consumer groups around the world in raising their awareness on World Consumer Rights Day. The department also seeks the assistance of the business community to participate in raising awareness of World Consumer Rights Day. The Consumer Affairs Department and the National Consumers Association encourages large and small retailers, service providers, utility companies to show a sense of appreciation to the consumer in whatever way they can on World Consumer Rights Day. This could be in the form of a special sale, discounts on certain items, or a simple acknowledgement. But in whatever way we can, please let's show the appreciation to consumers on this special day. President John F. Kennedy on March 15, 1962, in a special message to Congress on protecting the consumer interests, recognized consumers as being the largest economic group in the economy, affecting and affected by every public and private economic decision, but yet the only important group in the economy whose views are not often heard. The Government Information Service will host a live panel discussion on World Consumer Rights Day to highlight the opportunities and challenges for consumers using smart products. The live panel discussion will be broadcast on March 15 at 10 a.m. on the National Television Network. From the Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, I am Jacques Kingston Compton reporting. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquaire. Préparation et preneur nous cachent manger mérité à chaque proportion, particulièrement après un désastre. Millions de conseils qui créent empêcher ou joindre maladie. Faites attention au cas de manger. Examinez bien pour voir si dommagé et gardez pour date où mérité pas servi encore. Le cas de viande à la même bouche. Gardez pour ce temps bureau libérément. Un ministre santé qui a mis au qui viande salade examiné et est satisfait pour vendre. Pas de viande, poisson, viande poule et bien l'autre manger qui mérite de rester à souffrir pour plus de 4 000 litres d'eau et bien au machin. Lavez la main bien et puis savon et l'eau tiède avant et du moins tant qu'on entame viande qui peut être tuite. Servez mon sur planche et l'autre bagaille à part pour couper viande qui pas tuite. Mettez les temps manger tuite en fridge la même après vous servir. Et pas de pour plus qui dé pour trois jours. Et que vous avez chauffé, fait à si vous chaud à pile. Changer, manger propre car empêcher maladie. Pour précaution. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, cuyez bio information santé à numéro 468 secteur 49. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Monsieur Ternisha. Monsieur et Mesdames, département qui est responsable pour l'information au gouvernement de la CGIS, la CGIS, la CGIS et la Télévision Nationale, PIA NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle créole pour cet homme, Primus Hutchinson. La Janine appelle pour le public là pour une bonne précaution des maladies de la fièvre dengue. Ça a fait après le département de santé, trouver une communication à l'agence de santé publique, COIBLA, la CCAF, avec l'organisation de santé en Amérique, chef officier de médecin. Dr. Mullen Frederick déclare que, malgré le public là à sous garde, 
pour dengue durant saison la pluie développement qui j'ai fait récemment en juin j'ai une cause pour public la venir plus concerné des problèmes dengue ça là dans les différentes qualités la fièvre dengue alors ça veut dire il y a un monde ça trouve maladie plus qu'il y a une fois dernière fois cette licite sur fait plus maladie dengue c'était l'année 2013 et ça c'était plus fort en maladie ça là à part de ça la fièvre là aussi tenu la dernière dengue cette licite en année 2000 et 2011 Selon Dr. Fedrick, la maladie d'Engue qui est en pays présentement, c'est une qui a concerné en pile. C'est pour raison ça que le chef officier médecin a concerné le public là, avec le conseil pour prendre toutes les précautions nécessaires pour essayer de battre et faire une grande bataille pour couper et effacer la population de l'Engue à cette ci Alors, par aujourd'hui, ils ont dit qu'ils ont quitté de l'eau qui mort en cette place pour encourager ces Mengue Sala pour prendre le Département de construction a gardé à qui plus meilleure manière pour éprouver à ce mouvement trafic et pour réduire à ce quantité d'activité trafic à ce gros chemin castri pour Gozile. Pour ça, le département de transport, ensemble avec l'organisation pour les CTC, a implémenté un programme pour adresser effectivement les méchants problèmes. Il y a aussi ingénieur du département de construction, Néam Sylvester, a annoncé qui il a implémenté diverses façons pour contrôler les problèmes de trafic à ce chemin qui pour Gozile. Selon Sylvester, il y a un espoir qui a été réduit par 15 pour 20% de problèmes de trafic. Il a essayé le programme pour 3 mois et pour ça, il a créé une initiative qui a été réduit à ce mouvement de trafic comme il a fermé les chemins qui sont en route de Wilbur Island Gases. Il y a un espoir qui a été apporté un soulagement pour régler les problèmes de trafic. Selon l'inspecteur police, Benson de Terville, le programme là, a placé attention plus à ce qu'il est temps de 7 h pour 9 h bon matin, quand il a barré ce petit chemin qui l'autre a servi, pour vivre et encourager pour servir le grand chemin plus tôt. La gagne signe pour directer ce chauffeur de l'autre, avec ce police là qui a fait assurer que tout a fait marcher comme doit être pour l'autre 8 pour 12 semaines pour venir. Et ça, c'est côté nous entrer en bout de nouvelle nous. Je vous remercie autant pour garder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous donner un présentation à la nouvelle accueil. À présent, nous avons vu. Bonne chance. Merci, on peut le primus. Et ici, nous avons vu ce qui nous a fait à nous. An Atlantic high pressure system will maintain a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow and rough seas around the Eastern Caribbean during the next few days. Low level clouds drifting with this wind flow will produce a few scattered showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The tide for Castries Harbour was high at 3.53 p.m. and will be low at 10.06 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was high at 5 p.m. and will be low again at 11.33 p.m. The seas moderate to locally rough with waves and swells 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. The sun will rise Thursday at 6.17 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.